Do you know what dog sledding is? From what I know, I think dog sledding is the practice of that um of ten or ten to twelve dogs pulling a sled for travel. Is that it? Yeah. Okay. Do you know what mushers are? I think mushers are the people that stand at the back of the sled and tell the dogs what to do. And um that sort of tell the dogs yeah, like I said what to do. Okay. Do you think dog sledding is humane or inhumane? Well, from what I know, I would also say it depends on how the owners treat the dogs. Like some people overuse the whip and maybe like just thinks that it won't hurt them. So some and some people like it from the movie A Below, they treat the dogs good and then sometimes they treat them bad. So I think it's sort of both inhumane and inhumane. Why do you think this? Well, I think it's because, I mean, I don't know. I don't know why. It's just... Do you think the dogs are taken care of enough? No, I don't think it's that. I mean, because they maybe make them sleep outside, t t tied up or something. And maybe they... <laughs> Maybe they not get enough food or water, and sometimes where they're at, what they use, like for the like because they use it for transportation on the ice, it's cold. And maybe they need just like maybe I don't know, just get more taken care of. Do you think the dogs are prepared enough to run races? It depends on how they prepare them and how long they prepare them like you asked like if they want to train them for almost their whole life until they're older like maybe five five years old maybe to run the first race or six then that would be okay but if it's like younger then they probably wouldn't know that much on what to do in case of any emergencies like older dogs would do you know what the idea to rod is and how long it is? I'm guessing that the idea rod is a race, and um, or maybe a, maybe a week or two days. That's it. Participating in the grueling 1,100-mile sled dog race across Alaska, known as the Iditarod, means months, if not years, of preparation and training for both humans. The training since I got here of myself has been different, just basically toughening up, you know, getting used to the cold and the pounding of the sled and all that kind of stuff and getting thrown off and bumps and bruises and getting over that. And dogs. August to September until now, you really just run every day, or pretty much, yeah. It's yeah, it's a it's a long way to go to to go from one race, but you know this is what everybody's been working up to. So. It's a lot of work to commit to having a a team of of racing sled dogs that are competing in this race. These four-legged athletes are much more than the marathoners they're often compared to. These dog teams are essentially running 42 marathons back to back in as short of time as possible with the top competitors crossing the finish line in Nome in about eight or nine days. So before this trek through some of the toughest train on earth, each canine gets thoroughly checked out by a team of veterinarians to make sure their bodies can handle the strain. If they can take the, the training and the, the speed that the musher usually has them go at, then they can become a sled dog. Leading up to the race, Jan Bullock, the Iditarod's head veterinary technician, examines about 100 dogs a day. We're here at the Iditarod headquarters where the dogs are getting their final checkup before the big race. This is a new thing for you. Big, strong dog, isn't he? Each dog that's going to run the race has to go through our program where we uh, draw blood 
and we check to make sure that all their internal organs are functioning as they should be, making sure they don't have any infections, kidney problems, liver problems. We also microchip them. If they haven't had a microchip put in before, they'll get one. If they have one already, we scan them with the microchip reader. And this is the third phase of what we do for these dogs. And each dog gets um, an electrocardiogram. And this machine behind me here will record his heart rate and rhythm. And what I'm looking for is I'm screening for abnormalities. We want to make sure that these dogs' hearts are in tip-top condition. The vets look over lab results of every dog entering the race. This year, there's a record 96 teams in the race, which makes an upwards of 2,000 dogs to evaluate. And according to race officials, since the screening has been in place, four canine athletes have not been allowed to enter the Iditarod. We've also found after doing so many years of research that these dogs are not like your regular pet. These are athletes. Each dog is, is looked over individually. The veterinarians will check their respiration, their heart rate, look at the feet to make sure the feet are in good shape, look in the, inside the dog's mouth, check them for, uh, for hydration to make sure they're nice, have nice fluid balance. We'll look at their coat, make sure they have a good coat. We'll look at their weight to make sure they have enough reserve fat in order to start the race in case it gets to be a cold race. We have drug testing on the race also. At the uh, start of the race, before the dogs take off, we have a random drug testing program. It all also happens on the race. The drug testing crew will go out to different checkpoints, unbeknownst to any but their crew, and they will test certain dogs. And then all the dogs that finish the race, the first, particularly the first 20 teams, are all drug tested. And there's several, several different drugs that they test for, and he, mostly for in performance enhancement and to mask pain. Iditarod officials say that since the drug testing program was implemented 10 years ago, no drug test has ever come back positive. We'll let him up slowly. Good boy. You've done good. And he's done. You know, the mushers have a choice whether they want to go and have a cardiac uh, test or have blood work. We don't really mind if they do or don't, but we're going to make sure these dogs are nice and healthy. They're definitely special animals, and I think after having done it once, you really do appreciate how special they are. Um, any dog that finishes, no matter what place you come in. At the Iditarod headquarters for Discovery News, I'm Casey D. Gardner.